Hello, and welcome to this presentation about how to use MIDI keyboards uh, with your computer. Now, MIDI is a universally accepted standard. It's the way that almost all musical hardware works. It's a type of uh, interpreting musical data in a way that computers and software will be able to understand. It's short for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Uh, most computers won't have any kind of hardware built in to interpret MIDI, so you'll need a MIDI interface. For this keyboard, I'm not going to use a MIDI interface. I'm only using one keyboard. So instead, I have this USB to MIDI adapter. The MIDI interface is effectively stored in the plug, and on the other end are the MIDI in and MIDI out. To connect this to my computer, I can plug the USB end of this cable into a USB port. The other ends of the cable are labelled MIDI in and MIDI out. This is MIDI in and out of the interface, so I need to plug the MIDI in end of this cable into the MIDI out socket on my keyboard. As I plugged it in, Windows said it was installing drivers. Now that's not particularly important, but it is worth noting that you will need to install drivers for any kind of new hardware. Now that we have our keyboard plugged in, we need some kind of software on our computer to understand the MIDI data. Uh, there are programs that are dedicated to just this, but I'm going to use a DAW, D-A-W, Digital Audio Workstation. In this case, I chose to use FL Studio, because it's what I'm most familiar with. To use a MIDI instrument in FL Studio, go to Options, MIDI Settings, and choose your MIDI interface. In my case, it's USB 2 MIDI, and click Enable. For specific controllers, you can change the type, and you can change different things to different MIDI channels. Seeing as I'm only using one interface, it's not very important to use different channels, but this might be useful if you're having lots of different MIDI instruments, and you want to send different ones to different instruments. Doing this will assign the keys to the different notes in FL Studio and send them to the channel that's selected. But you can also hook up things like this modulation wheel. And to do that, right click on the parameter you want to link it to, press link to controller, and turn the knob that you want to link it to. Now I just change the volume of the kick to be assigned to the mod wheel. And as I turn it, you can see that the volume turns up and down as I play it. It works. As well as this, this particular MIDI keyboard, and most of them, have velocity, which links the volume of what you're playing to how hard you press the key. So if I press it gently, it's very quiet. If I press it hard, it's louder. This might get irritating if you want to record and you want to add your own velocity later. So to turn this off, go to Options, MIDI Settings, link Note On Velocity to None. You can also link anything to the velocity. So far, we've just been playing the kick. It's quite useful to be able to play instruments that aren't the kick. So to do this, I'm going to add a new channel by clicking Add New Channel. And I could add any of these, but I'm going to add FL Keys, which is FL Studio's built-in piano. So now, whenever I play the keyboard, I have a grand piano. To choose between the channels that are already in, I just click on them. There are also buttons on the keyboard for this. A useful feature in FL Studio is the piano roll. What this does is it allows you to manually sequence MIDI data. So I right click on the channel that I want to send notes to and click piano roll. I can now add any notes that I like. So I'll just add something quickly and then fast forward. So here are my notes. When I press play, it plays them back. To do this, I simply clicked to add a note. It plays it back so you can hear it. Then you can drag this end to change the size of it and move it around in 
move it around in pitch and time. Hold right click and mouse over it to delete notes. There are also other tools in the piano roll. The paintbrush paints notes like this. Delete deletes notes is exactly the same as right clicking. Mute turns notes off so that you can turn them back on again. Slice cuts them into pieces. Select selects notes so that you can do things to them all at once, such as delete or resize. And we also have playback, which plays back the notes that are equal to this line. So when I click, I've just told you how to sequence MIDI data manually in FL Studio, but how does this relate to MIDI keyboards and music hardware? Well, it allows us to record our own notes straight to the piano roll. The way we do this in FL Studio is pressing Record, Automation and Score, which records the notes you play and all the knobs you turn. I'm going to turn on the metronome and press play. Now when I press play, it will record to the channel I have selected. So I can select the kick or the clap or whatever and record to those. But I want to record to FL keys, so I'm going to make sure that's selected right now. When I press play, it'll count me in for four beats and then record. Before I record, I'm going to add a separate FL keys and record to that instead, so it's easier to manipulate the notes separately. I'm going to right click and press clone. What this does is creates an identical channel to the first one. I'm going to record now. I'm going to press record, automation and score, and when I'm ready, I'm going to press play. You'll notice that I made a couple of mistakes in there. Now that's fine because we can right click, go to piano roll and edit the notes we just did just like anything else. Before we do this however, I mentioned velocity earlier. These bars down the bottom correspond to a note. You can change the height of these to change the volume of the note. This is the velocity. So I can play this back. and the ones with the lower bars have less velocity. Now, one, some of the biggest mistakes in this were the timing, and we can fix this automatically with something called quantization. Now, what quantization does, it's designed to fix the timing of things. It splits time up into a series of sections. So, for example, a quarter of a beat long. If the start or the end of the note is close to one of these lines, it will move it so that it's dead on. So that each note can only start or end on the nearest quarter of a beat. This helps to make timing more accurate. To do this, I can click Tools, Quantize, and it will automatically move each note to each of these lines. You can choose sensitivity, how far away from the line it has to be, quantize end time, duration, which is both start and end. So I'm just going to press OK. And this will have changed the timing quite a bit and fixed quite a lot of it. So I'm going to press play. Still not perfect. And this is where automatic quantization becomes useful. At the top, there is a snap. This means that anywhere you place a note, it will snap to the lines. You can change how far apart these lines are to sixth step, third of a beat, to anything in this menu. If it's set to anything other than line or cell, it will automatically quantize everything you play to this. So I'm going to press quarter of a beat. Now the automatic quantization is on, I can record again. Let's hear that back.
it appears my timing is so bad that it's quantized it not quite right. I think I should have taken a bit more time to screw around finding the right setting here to get it right. Quantizing, however, is no substitute for editing it manually. So now I'm going to edit it myself to make the notes right, and I'll fast forward this part. Now I'm done, so I'm going to play it back again with the right timing. While a second ago it might have appeared that the quantization was badly off, it actually really helped, because it made sure each note started and stopped exactly in time with something. It meant that I wasn't having to use the slicer to cut every single note to the dead right length, so they weren't all different lengths. It did actually make my life a bit easier. Now that I have everything in decent time, I can show you one more thing, another automatic tool to change everything. This swing slider. It's fairly self-explanatory. Turn it up for more swing. Another thing you can do in FL Studio is assign keys on the keyboard to different drums. Now I know we did this before with the kick, but I mean to assign specific keys to specific samples. So pressing a key will trigger a sample and different keys trigger different samples. So there's a plugin in FL Studio dedicated to this. It's called FPC, Fruity Pad Controller. It's designed for pad controllers, but since they use MIDI, we can use it with keyboards as well. So here is FPC. How to use this plugin isn't really important to this presentation. But you'll notice at the top, as I mouse over one of these, it says the name of the note I need to play to trigger it. So after a little time of messing around, Still not perfect though. Another thing in FL Studio is the ability to add effects to things. I'm not going to explain many of the complications. Just delete this quickly. But you can click on the channel and drag this number up and down to assign it to a mixer track. I'm going to assign it to number 5. And I'm going to do the same with the other channel. Now, in the mixer, on number 5, I can add an effect. I'm just going to add reverb. Turn it up and straight away. Reverb. There are also a number of channel settings as well. If I click on a channel, here's the plugin. If I click this, I can see the settings. And there's a number of interesting things in here. For example, portamento. This would be a bit more beneficial on the melody, I think. I can also turn things into an arpeggio. The way the arpeggiator works is it, when you play a chord, it plays every single note in that chord in the order that you choose. So you can go up the chord, down the chord, up and down the chord. So I'm going to go up and down, it sounds like this. You can turn the range up to do more than one octave. I can also change the time to make the note shorter and the length of the notes. So now when I play it back with these changes, it sounds a bit different. Finally, for this entire presentation, I've just been using the channel rack in one pattern. Up here, you can see it's called Pattern 1. If I click this button, I can see the playlist. When I click in the playlist, it will add Pattern 1. I can create different patterns. If I add a new pattern, I can press Add here, and I can call it 
got this. Oh, add some hats, snares. And I can put these in the playlist alongside the melody and play it back. So that's it for this presentation. That was the basics of recording and manipulating MIDI data in FL Studio.